just past that cemetery on Route 5. And what struck my eye was there was a man, he gets out of the truck. The truck is unmarked, it's a white vehicle, but what, what caught my eye was his hard hat. His mm -hmm. hard hat didn't look like the modern hard hats. It looked like something probably from the 1940s or 50s. It was shiny and round. And I said, I've never seen nothing like that before. And then the guy looked at me. Now this is, I got goosebumps again. The guy had a, had a goatee. And when he looked, he had black hair, he had his hard hat, but when I looked at him, like when I'm looking, when you turn your head, you can see people's eyes with the white. His eyes were completely black. And he just looked at me like this, and I looked at him like this, we made eye contact, and then I looked in front and I said, you know what, I'm going to stop, I don't, I can't go around because the guy's here. And I looked in the mirror and there, here comes a huge SUV going 55 miles an hour, and I was like, please stop. Don't let me hit the car for the kids. She just turned. I went to step on the gas to try to avoid getting hit, and the lady hit me full force. And I, I thought I was going to be okay. And the lady comes out, and her exact words were like, my eyes were fixated on that guy. And she said, she turned around, she says, you saw that guy, right? I said, yeah. She goes, She's looking around because he would have had to have turned, stopped on the road, and pulled around somehow. Nobody saw him turn around. And she's like, you did see, and she's like, never mind. So somehow he just vanished. Wow. We have no idea where he went. And because she wasn't going to go over and get him as a witness, and he was, he was gone. It was, I don't know if he was there, if he was, I don't want to say if he was a demon or something, and he was there to cause the accident. But... She was okay. I ended up after that. I went downhill. I couldn't walk after that for a long time. I ended up three years later going on disability because I did all the damage in my neck and everything. So it was just one thing after another. So when that happened, the accident, I'm going to speed things because there's so much I got to tell you. Um, so now I have to come up with something. So. Our, our real estate lady like said, you know what, convert. She tried selling. She put it on, on the market for three months. And she says, you know what, what's weird? She goes, I can see where somebody clicks on my site to see if they're looking. She goes, mm -hmm. not one person clicked on your house. She goes, no. And she goes, I don't, I don't get that. But she says, convert it back to a duplex and rent it so you have some money coming in. And um, so this is like weird, bizarre things that happen to people. Right. And, and these, are, these are normal people. When these they... are just normal people like us. Now, so the last guy who moves in, mm -hmm. he's so excited because he moves in and he has a wife and a three-year-old son. And he's all excited. He moves in. His wife, she doesn't move in for almost three months. Then she moves in. She's all happy. She loves the Christmas decorations. She goes into a massive depression. Then in February, she disappears. She doesn't. She leaves and never comes back. We never saw her again or her son. We asked them in April, if you stay, we won't go under rent. Let us know. All of a sudden, he could not wait to get out. When he got out, he, he literally, he, he got out. He still had one more month of rent. And he was out, and he left his stuff behind. So now, do thus, people do people like sign leases here? They sign, yeah. They sign a lease. We go through a realtor, yep. and they do all the background checks. They do mm -hmm. all the credit checks because there's a lot of things. Because, um, so they they sign a one year lease. They're and, gonna stay within. And they lease. don't. They cut out of their lease. They don't even. They they uh, most of them, except for that one. Most of them will stay that one year, and they're gone. Except for the medical student people. Um, she she literally I mean you, you could see she went downhill. Is that you guys? Yeah, you heard that right? I heard, yeah, I was about I, I heard enemy man's voice. Mm -hmm. That's the third time I heard it. Yeah. That's creepy. Yeah, it's the third time I've heard it, but that was the loudest. You didn't hear I think he said hello, right? I heard something. It was a man yeah, a man's voice. Yeah. Wow. So now I, just because people have asked me yeah. You guys have stayed here like what almost seventeen years? Sixteen years. Sixteen. 
I know like a lot of it was you guys yeah. tried to leave. But we tried to leave. Mm -hmm. It won't let me leave. Here's and because that's yes. what the question I get all the time. That, well, why are they still there? Yes, and that could be a whole entire topic itself. Mm -hmm. It's okay. gets really bizarre. You heard it again. Yeah. Who doesn't feel? Yeah, I feel like that. Funny thing is that I was here last week. Now move out. It's not. A lot of people say just pack up your bags and leave. Well, that's yeah. not that simple. Right. In 2009, we I end up meeting a lawyer. He goes, "Why do you want to get?" I said, "Well, I want to get a better mortgage, but I want to get out of this house." And he said, "Why?" I told him about it being ghost. He laughed. I'm like, "You know what? I, I'll, I'm going to get you out of this kind of mortgage. Get you some money." And then you can move out, buy another house, sell this house, whatever you gotta do. And he says, I don't really believe in ghosts, but he said, I'll help you out. It was like the house is always fighting us. He, he went and got us, but now instead of getting money to move out, he had to do what they call a debt to ratio, where he had to pay off a couple of vehicles. And so the money we would have got to move out, yeah, he did. Oh, we would have got. Yeah. But now, here's the sad part. In his 50s, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I get a, a phone call and phone call from an attorney, and he says, uh, "Are you Jay and Elka Yapel?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "I'm handling." I got, I'm gonna start. So everybody that's been, I, they, I just kept reading. Um, I'm reading one of the the comments, and it says that the the video keeps freezing, so it's probably yeah. whatever is here is not allowing it. No. So. Yeah, but um, so anybody associated with you has had uh, streaks of bad luck. Streaks of bad luck and really bad misfortune. So she's a psychic, and I said, well, okay. Well, she came over, and when she came over, so as she went through the whole house, guys, she went in the basement. I heard a loud gasping sound. She grabbed her throat and dropped on the ground. Her thing, and you can see almost she's turning red and blue like she's choking. Got her outside, and about 45 minutes later, at that moment, she goes, all of a sudden, I went to turn, she goes, it felt like somebody grabbed my lower jaw, opened up, and it felt like somebody was either pouring concrete or sand down my throat. She goes, I could not breathe, I could not swallow. She says, the next thing I know, everything starts to go black. This is the fall of 2009. This entity, came behind me and he said, now you've done it. He said, now you're going to pay. You need some water? Are you okay? Okay. Is she going to be okay? Is okay? He says, he reached from the ceiling down to the floor, came out of the staircase in the attic. He said, Jay, he walked right in front of me. He goes, it was as black as night. And he says, it went right into the wall. And I, it was like deja vu. I saw that same thing happen to me when I was up there. Growling. This is going to be an interesting night because I can feel well, it. Well, right I do now. remember like every time we had a camera on, nothing would happen. And then, because you just yeah. brought back a lot of memories when we were here the first time doing the investigation. And as soon as the cameras went off, that's when things would happen. Yeah, it's yeah. this thing that's how smart this is.